All right. So welcome, everybody. The second to last class. What? Yes. So there will be one more next week, and then it'll be sporadic from there on out, but it, we're, we won't be doing a formal schedule kind of going forward um, as we're getting in back to school and all kinds of other things. So make sure that you're following if you're, uh, you get the newsletter for the chuckjonescenter.org. Or and also follow on social media, Facebook, Instagram, that kind of thing. You'll see certain things pop up. We'll, we'll do like a class, you know, randomly during a week. We'll give you some heads up. Um, so today, getting into this ink marker and color pencil month in Artist Studio August, I wanted to get into one of my favorite films, which is Super Rabbit, and kind of tying down in this theme of taking a classic cartoon and then re like imagining a scene within there not doing a specific scene from there, but kind of like our interpretation of that. So last week we did um, for sentimental reasons. So this was, I finished, see, ha ha ha, I finished. There was my colored pencil sketch. It doesn't really show that well because I don't have the lights on it. Uh, and today we're going to get back into colored pencil. Next week we're going to do an ink and marker, um, but today we're going to do colored pencil and we're going to start off with the pencil that I still don't know the name of, the car and the ash, a whatever, Swiss made, ooh la la, I think that's French, um, non photo blue pencil. So I'm going to start on my paper now. I've got a 9 by 12 uh, or in a 12 by 9 format, so I'm going landscape. And what I like about working on dark paper with colored pencil is you can really get certain colors to jump right off the page. But if I've got this as kind of my landscape, what I like about the super bugs is the context of the film, obviously, is he gets these uh irradiated carrots or whatever from the scientist and that gives him these superpowers but he has to keep eating the carrots because they only last for so long so what i wanted to do was have something where bugs is kind of popping out of a phone booth right that they have kind of in the film but we're going to do our own little phone booth and then just a pile of carrots uh and we'll give like kind of the radioactive things as he's just kind of come busting out there in his in his um, superhero garb. So given this, I'm going to, in my paper, I'm going to have my left or my right third is where he bugs is going to be coming out of. And my left third right here is going to be about where bugs is in the action. Right. So I'm kind of balancing out my shot and I'm going to start with a circle. Imagine that. All right. So, Again, I'm not using my wrist and drawing tight. I'm just kind of keeping it open. Um, and I'm going to have him, because he's, he's going to come flying out of this thing. So I'm going to have him at a slight angle. And so what, what, in drawing the bugs, it's kind of the bugs, bugs bunny. I go for a kind of a bean shape, sort of. Right, he's I want to say like four heads tall, three and a half heads, maybe three three and a half heads tall. Um, and so what I want to do is I'm going to show his body like this. So he's got kind of a a tilt, and his body is tilting. So his head's kind of tilting this way. His body's tilting a little bit of the other. We're going to give a we're going to give a carrot. A hand with a carrot over here. So let me bring that down a little bit more. I'm keeping my sketches real light also because I'll go back over this with colored pencil. And I think he's going to be given the. I think he's going to be given kind of that hand on the hip type deal. And then we're going to do one leg. Kind of one leg over. And maybe one leg out. Okay, so there we go. So just give me a start, like a starting point. And then his, his feet. are big, uh, obviously, but he's he's got a full suit on. So that's kind of my kind of my beginning to the pose. 
Um, and then of course, you know, if you go, we'll, we'll start just a little bit. It's kind of like an oval. I'll start this way, just kind of giving me an idea of head shape, stuff like that. All right, that's, that's the intro. And he's got a carrot. I'll use myself as reference. And if I'm holding a carrot, you know, what does that look like in my hand? Just rough. And then we're going to go for, so I'm, I'll sit there and I'll be like, hmm, like, how does that look? And then I'll notice how my knuckles come out, right? And my fingers come out, my knuckles sit. And if I'm holding onto a carrot and notice too, like if I'm holding onto something, it's not necessarily just like a tight fist. So I've got maybe a couple fingers up, maybe I've got something gripped here and you know, it's like this. So this would be a cylinder. I don't have a cylinder, I've got soft pastels. So if I'm chewing on a carrot, you know, maybe I've got something like that. So anyway, just use yourself for reference. So he's gonna come busting out of this phone booth. And let's see, we'll give the give the ground here. I'm gonna have kind of my background line set in and then we'll put it on the street. Why not? Bugs will bugs will be coming out on the street. So I'll give a like a road, a bit of a horizon line. So this will be a phone booth and I don't remember exactly how they look back in the day, but we'll kind of make up our own. And then, you know, there we go. So it's got these doors now. So the phone booth door opens one way, like an accordion. So I'm going to have I'm going to have his accordion door opening up as he comes flying out. And then they've got windows in it. Keeping with perspective, right? You'll notice as my lines go down, I get a little straighter and just a little bit so I've got that coming down here. We'll open this up. All right, and then inside, I'm not too worried about inside other than maybe I'll put a old school rotary phone. Not even, not even a rotary phone. There we go. And that'll sit on the, and then you got the little mouthpiece that you talk into. There you go. Okay. So there's the phone device that sits on there. And then I'm, I'm going to have this whole pile of carrots. So if I'm going to do a pile of carrots, I'm going to hold on a second. Hey, dude, you need to get one of your own blue chairs. And there's one over here. All right. And if you had a three year old, that's what you would be telling him right now. Also, you need to get your own chair. I cannot take anything off, buddy. Daddy's going to teach a class and then you can get your chair. All right. So we've got all these carrots. And they're going to come just pouring out onto the street, right? And this is where Superbugs gets his power from. So this giant pile, they don't always have to be in the same direction either. I'm just a bunch of triangles I'll tie this down later when I'm kind of getting into the shape but I just want to get an idea of the volume right volume of carrots there we go I'll put in like the little um, the leaf parsley looking thing after that all right so he's he's kind of coming zooming out and then he's got this awesome cape So we'll give 
give some cape love to bugs. All right. So real quick, we've we've got kind of a a loose idea of bugs' shape. And once we have an idea of bugs' shape and kind of his pose, and remember he's coming like flying out so it wouldn't make sense to have his ears straight up so we're going to have his ears kind of kicking back a little bit he's got kind of a cocky pose to him and then he's busting out now i want to get in and tie down a little bit my character features so i'm going to i'm going to get in here now with bugs it's not like a perfect not a perfect um, like oval all the way around. It kind of kicks in a little bit. Like you see that shape just kind of digs in just a little bit. And we'll give his mouth. All right. And then for for this bugs, we'll do the, we'll do just the, his kind of normal wide open eyes. There we go. And he's got that plume of hair. He's gonna be looking right at us. Not, not too creepy. Okay, so sharpen my pencil here. Now I've got this ear, and if I bring that down in, I it's going to be a little thicker toward the top because of the angle of where he's at. It's a little bit of perspective, um, and then this ear will do the same. Okay, so we've got kind of bugs, give him his whiskers, maybe his whiskers there are kind of bending back a little bit. All right, and then in the reference shot, so Bugs's cape is tied. And his, we got his body kind of going this way, which means his arm, his arm is gonna be a little bit in front. Right. And so we'll kind of start that in. Now he's got this S on his chest, but it's not Superman. It's, it's a stylized stylized S. Just like that. There you go. It's got like a shield kind of look to it, right? So it's a bit different. Like you're, you're going to want to go, you know, kind of something like that, which is not a Superman is. It is a super rabbit. So if I've got his arm here now, if I'm holding a carrot, right. And I'm, and if I'm leaning back and I'm, I've got my hand on my hip and I've got this hand with a carrot um, and I'm, I'm going to have to adjust my arm on this. I've, I've got it maybe a, a little bit down, but notice it's, it's a kind of a tight angle, you know, like here, 20 degrees, whatever. And that's what I'm using. And I'm going to hold up to where my carrot's about at my mouth. So I'm going to have to readjust my drawing here because I did not do that part right. All right. And we're going to bring his arm out. We'll exaggerate it just a bit. And again, remember, he's holding on to the carrot. And it doesn't mean that it doesn't mean that his fingers are like perfectly together. There's carrot. And then I want that same perspective of 
it's here, give a bit of a smile to him. Um, I want that same perspective of wind blowing this way. All right, so his suit that he's wearing is kind of loose fitting. There we go. All right, and then I'm gonna bring that down. So there's there's the start to bugs. And then for here, we'll give a little bit of elbow. And perspective again, my lines in front, instead of this line being in front, which would mean I want this to show that it's going back this way. Okay, so now in, Scott, if you can put that context drawing back up real quick. Um, so in that, look at, no, you notice how his, he's got that baggy shirt, right? So um, it, we're, there's a little tie at the bottom, we're not gonna include that, and then his pants are kind of baggy. So what I wanted, what I can do in this is I can, I can make his shirt, I can make his shirt kind of swoop down a little bit and there's like a crease line and then I've got his hand here it's on his hip going back that way and same thing so I've got kind of this loose fitting shirt and now what I'm also noticing in my bugs is I probably have his legs too far out so I'm going to rein this in a little bit I'm going to put this down a little bit more. All right. And then as I show, like it, it's kind of stubby, right? Once you get this. We'll show his leg here. I'm, all I'm going to do is I just want to get enough down. so that I can come back in and kind of tie that down. So I'm not too far off on what I, where I was at before. And he's got these little kind of sock feet to him. All right, so let's tie that down. And again, I'm gonna show that it's loose fitting clothing. So you can add some, you know, wrinkles. He's got like kind of, um, actually, I don't even think there are cuffs. I think it goes straight into the leg. It's been right on positive, it goes straight into the leg. So there we go. We'll do the same thing here. And then uh, we got one foot. two feet. So that kind of gets that down. Um, we'll get his cape in here. It'll go underneath and it would kind of, I don't know, it's too much. I think to go full body length. So we're going to make his cape kind of curl up. There we go. All right. So we've got his cape. He's kind of busting out. There it is. Um, and just like that, we're, we kind of have that main down now. I probably have his head just a tiny bit too small, um, given what I have going on with the rest of his body. So one more time to the eraser. Oh, look at that. It's going away. And I'm probably going to shrink this up a little bit too, because I think this was, I think it was about right where I had it last time. This was too far. And then... We will go this route instead. Better to tie down a drawing and get it right at this stage before you 
get into it and realize that you've got to um, do a lot more work to redo something. And at that point, you might as well just scrap it and start over. So, we'll, again, we'll give those little ripples to it. At a very super talented, awesome guy named John Rowe, R O W E, if you get a chance, check him out, who is not only a phenomenal artist, but a super nice guy who gave me that advice way back when and said, there is no amount of rework that you can do to a bad drawing to get it right. Or really a bad piece that kind of goes for anything. And let me tell you our personal experience, he is 100% correct. Okay, that's a little bit better. It's a little shorter, feels a little bit more like bugs, not like it's too out of control. All right, so I've got that down. I have all my carrots and stuff here. I'm probably gonna tie my carrots in once I get to the color pencil phase um, because I have so many kind of pouring out on the street. But what I really wanted to get down first was this cape, you know, and bugs in his pose. And again, I've got fingers, thumb there. That makes sense. That makes sense. All right, now getting into color pencils. So last week was this, which looks a lot better in this light. Uh, and we had just started it out, just started getting into some of Pepe's coloring. And this is just Prismacolor Premier color pencils. And the reason why I like these, if you haven't heard me talk about it yet, is because it's a soft core pencil, which means it's a little waxier and it allows for more blending. And I like it because it's kind of like a painting style. So you can blend your colors a little easier. I mean, look at how much even it pops. Like I love how that pink pops off the dark paper, but you can get, you can work and rework. So just because I went dark doesn't mean I can't put white or lighter highlights in. So you can bring your color up, push it down. Uh, it really works well. So we're gonna apply this same kind of principle to this guy and I, when I do bugs, I usually have him as a cool gray. So I don't know what your color pencils look like, but I finally put mine in a nifty travel pack, right? Lots of color pencils, lots of color pencils. And I'm going with cool grays. So I've got warm grays, cool grays, and French grays. I don't know what French grays do, but the croissants taste good. So I'm going to go with the uh, cool gray. I usually start off in the middle. So like a 30 or 50%. This time I'm using a 30%. Um, actually, no, I'm going to go 50%. I'm going to go 50% cool gray for um, Bugs' body and like part of his head, his feet, stuff like that. And then instead of using a white to start off with, with the muzzle around his face and his eyes um, and his gloves, I'm going to use like a 20% uh, cool gray. So... And then what I'll do there is I'll just do it very lightly and then I'll use the white to bring up my highlights and then I'll push it down with like a 30% or a 50% cool gray. So I'll usually when I start, um, I like to keep my colored pencils sharp. If you're going like over a large area, it's fine if it starts to kind of get more of a dull tip, like this to me is a dull tip, right? Um, because you're just kind of, you're covering a large area. But because my areas here are fairly small, I want to sharpen this up. So I'm going to get this into a, that's much better. And when I get into bugs, I just, I'm going to re-outline a little bit. Now, my style for colored pencils is I do not like to have a traditional outline to my character features, like you would see on like a cell or something like that. You know, if it were inked and you saw like a solid line, I like to create that blended look. So um, that means that I don't have a hard, I'll show you what I mean. So I'll blend. So let's say I have, uh, you know, two features here. Maybe those are two eyeballs. Right, and I, I want to blend. Right, and I'll create a line like there. And then if I have something like a shadow or something here, I'll go back in. 
Now, if I were to do this the other way, it would be uh, like I'd have a hard line like this, and then I would essentially color within that line. I don't want to do that. I'm my again. Your style is your style. You do what you're comfortable with. This is how I like to approach colored pencil drawings. All right, so. I'm going to just get my initial blocking down for bugs, and that includes his ears. So I'll, I'll go very light to start with. Um, you don't need to put down a lot, so don't press super hard. Because you want to, the whole idea behind this is layering. Layering is great. And there we go. So I'll, it, it, it might look kind of a little weird to start like, oh, there's a whole lot to it. But just like in that Pepe Penelope drawing, um, as you layer, you start to build up some really awesome dynamics in your colors as they blend together. All right. So there's that. Now, there's really no other place other than maybe we have a little bit of gray here for his wrist that we can see maybe just a tiny bit there. Other than that, we don't see really any more gray because the, the suit, he's wearing a suit, so all the other gray is in there. Now, from here, I'll go and I'll pick uh, a 50. I've got stuff falling all over the place. I've got a 50, a 70% and a 30%, uh, all right. Did I get that right? No, 70, 90, sorry, 70, 90, and 30. That's what I've got. So with these three, I'll push it down and pull it up, right? Uh, because I'm gonna use a 20% and a white, um, and then maybe like a, a little soft blue in order to get shading and stuff around the white so that that way the, the tones are a little different. So I want to go in with a, I'm gonna go in with a, 30%. And again, I'm, this is too dull for what we, the areas that we have here. So I'm going to sharpen that up. And then I'm going to start, what I'll do is I'll use this 30% to get my highlights in. So there we go. And we got that kind of bridge to his nose there. And I'm gonna have my light source coming down from this way. So this side of his head will be a little brighter than his left side of his face. All right. And then I'll come back with my 70%, which is already sharp. And I'll go ahead and, and, and on, on this one, because I can use this as a base, I'll press a little harder and I'll lay down a little and I'll fill in those kind of those little gaps that you see. And then it's like, oh no, what happened? Well, I'll go back with my 30. And again, this is why I like Prisma Color. They don't pay me, but if they did, I would be fine with it for product promotion. So I can go back in, and as you can see, I can build back on that just because I went with a darker color. You know, think of like markers or watercolor. If you go with a dark color, you're you're kind of screwed. So you want to work light to dark. This one, I'll start light um, sometimes, but I can easily. All right, you can see I can already start to pull my highlights up, which is kind of cool which means it allows me to play a little bit more with the, with the um, medium. We'll darken this up just a little bit because it's a little too light. Okay. All right. So there's, there's starts his head. And I'll do just one ear also. I'm going to go ahead and press a little firmer with this. So um, another thing I like to do is depending on where my light source is, um, to the underside of things, I'll put like a teal as a highlight, because um, usually I'll have like a warm light on top, and so I have a cool light underneath. 
So if I do this, press a little harder. All right, so there's one ear. I'll go back in with my 50. And, and because, again, my light's coming from this way, it's going to trail off here. But you can see that working dark to light is not a big deal. There we go. And then it's going to trail. Okay. So, and then under here, um, it's not super light. You know, what he, it, it, you know, it's the underside of his ear. There, there is a little bit of light, but I don't want it real, real bright. Right. So we're just going to, we'll give a subtle highlight there. And then, like I said, when I'm doing, I'm going to sharpen this one up. So here's my signature color. Love this color. Use it on all kinds of stuff. It's kind of my style. I use it for the, sidewalls of my paintings i use it in all my paintings this color it's in my logos blah 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 so i'm going to use it's technically called light aqua but what i'm going to do is i'm just going to pull on the underside like almost if there was a glow underneath right i'm going to do that here do that just gently here and so that kind of gives it you can see a little bit, gives a little bit of a glow. Maybe it's a little hard to see on the, let's see, get that to focus. So you can kind of see it's a little bit of a glow underneath. Um, I'm going to go ahead and finish off the rabbit's ears. And then um, I'll probably like pick a pink real quick, um, a, a soft pink and a peach and like a dark magenta or even like a kind of a purplish red um, as the darker color underneath. All right, so there's, there's his other ear. Again, I'm gonna go back with a 50% and my light is up this way, so it'll trail off even a little further up on this ear. Prismacolor Premier, love these pencils. My name is Ben Olson. I do accept uh, royalty fees or, you know, product placement. It's totally fine with it. All right, there we go. And then I'm going to use this light aqua again underneath. Just a hint here, but that's it. All right, so I've got that down, and you can kind of see how fast that goes. And then I'm going to use... For bugs, I'll start off with a kind of a, it's called nectar. This is the pencil. And I'll start light. I'll come back in a little bit with a pink. So I'm not pressing too hard. And what I want to do is I'm going to, it's going to get lighter at, toward the bottom, right? And then a little darker toward the top because there's a shadow of his ear. So I'm going to press a little bit harder as I finish this up. There we go. And then I'm going to do the same thing to this ear. Like so. And then I'll press a little harder on the, all right. And then I'm leaving that kind of at the back. Now I'm going to come back with a, you know, like a pink this color here and just, there we go. It's a little light. Now I don't want to use as far as pink goes, it's, it's about as dark as I'm going to get. And then I'm going to come back in with, this is mulberry. So mulberry, and you might freak out and be like, oh, that's too dark. I mean, look at, look at the difference in contrast and colors, right? So I just want to come in and I just want to start to give a hint. Remember, I can lighten things up and I want to blend. So I'm going to just, I'm going to lay this color over it. I'm going to do the same thing here. And then if I feel like it's too strong, I'm going to go back over with my nectar color, which is this one. 
I'm just going to pull that up just a little bit. See, you can see how nice that blends. I feel like Bob Ross right now. See, friends, there are no accidents. Just happy little rabbits with really pink ears. All right. T, if you're watching, um, I would have expected by now for you not only to be completely finished, but for you to be pretty much mastering this skill. Um, Scott will remind you that you are supposed to be teaching this week, so I don't know what I'm doing here. All right, there we go. So I've got kind of that pink in the ear, a little hard to see maybe um, on with the, with the way I have the light right now, but you get the idea. So there's, there's those. Now let's get into the whites in his eyes. So let me get back to my colors here. I'm gonna use a white and a 20 and 10% gray. So as all my colored pencils go falling. All right, so I've got white. There goes another one. White, 20, and 10. I'm going to start with these. I'll get a little darker and maybe a 30 or a 50 when I do a shadow, but these are the ones I'm going to start with. Oh, did you get my colored pencils for me and my pencil? It's nice to have an assistant. Okay. Thanks, donut dog-wearing shirt person. I appreciate, I appreciate it. All right, so um, you're going to notice when we're coloring with white on this, you're going to see kind of the not dimples in the paper because this is a smooth black paper, but you're going to see a little bit. We're going to blend all that in and I'll start with my 20%. So let's sharpen this up because this is again, too dull for me. And I'm going to, my, my goal right now is his eyes and his muzzle. All right. Much better. So I'm just going to just going to get down this initial and I'm okay like it's it's 20% gray. I'm going to go right over where I had his irises. It's 20% gray, which is fine cuz I can build on this. All right, and then kind of looks creepy, doesn't it? Bugs is super creepy with these eyes. Maybe they're actually, maybe that that's more like superhero comic book eyes anyway, just all whites. All right, so now I'm going to sharpen my white pencil. Okay, and I'm going to go in and I'm going to start working from the center and then working its way out. There we go. And you can already see, like, you can see the difference um, in, ah, I'm watching the camera, not watching the paper. You can see the difference um, with that 20 to 20% 20 to white. So I'm cool with it going up this way. I'm gonna come back in with my 20. And I'm just, just going to give an outline. All right. Again, I don't like to do hard lines between. So if I were to do that, you'd see maybe like a dark line around his eye. Um, I like to blend in between so that I get kind of more of a three-dimensional effect. All right. And then let's, maybe I'll, Put a little bit more of a highlight in his ear with this 20% because I did a 30. There we go. Okay, so there's there's that. Now I'm gonna go back in with a with my 10. And I've got his muzzle. Is it a muzzle? I don't know. Is that just what you put call on dogs? I thought this part of the mouth was the muzzle. I could be wrong. Okay, and while I'm outlining this part, I'm going to actually be giving some shading to it. So I'm going to give a soft outline, but that's not how it's going to go because you won't even be able to tell that when I'm finished. And now I'm going to go in and fill that in. 
Uh, I have decided that I do not want his mouth open. So we'll do this. And then he's got his teeth, right? So that's kind of like a, oh, you just kind of colored in softly. Yes. Uh, I'm going to grab my 50% gray. I'm going to soften that up. Now, also, <clears throat> when I'm doing shadows, I'm not always just going to use a darker color. Um, so instead of just using a dark gray, I might come in with like a purple or um, a blue, give it a little bit more of a dynamic feel than just a than just a um, gray shadow. Okay, so we'll color that in. And again, I can press a little harder with this because I am going to now use this as kind of like a I equate it to oil paint. All right, and then I'm going to kind of bring this down and here we go. So we'll shade under here a little bit, a little here under a little bit. I do want his teeth in. All right, there we go. Now I'm going to go back in with my 10%. Uh, yeah. I'm going to fill that in a little bit more. So I'm going to just layer over that a little. It's a tiny Bugs Bunny. And that Pippi I worked on and Penelope were freaking huge. All right. And then my, my main shadow is underneath, right? So give it a little bit here, but it, it's on this side of his teeth because my light source is over here. Uh, okay. And now also, like he's got these cheeks up here. Oh, I forgot to put in his pink nose. Uh, I'll get that later. So he's got a little pink nose that goes right there. Um, I'm going to do, do just a little bit of very softly kind of build in a little shadow underneath and then because he's his, the light source is coming from this direction there we go so you can kind of see how that's coming together um, I'm going to go back in now with my white and get press a lot harder like so and then I might have you know like the shadow here we go. The Shadow TV series from Scott's going to have to remind me. I don't remember if it was the 30s. It was a radio program. I don't know. Yes, we are. All right. Um, I don't know, but you're going to have to find those because you need to put them all back in your game. All right. What, what was the radio program you were referring the, to? The Shadow. Oh, The Shadow. Like what? What era was that? Was that the forties or the thirties? Uh, that's a good question. I thirties or forties? Wow, oh, dude! I thought you would like know that off of you. <laughs> I, I do remember the Alec Baldwin movie from what the nineties? Nineties, yes. I actually now, granted, I haven't seen that in a while, but what I remember of when I watched it was that I enjoyed that film. Would I enjoy it again? I don't know. But I thought it was interesting. Okay. So I'm going to go back in here with a 70% gray. Sharpen up my pencil. All right. There we go. So that kind of... And then I'm going to go... If, we're going to go ahead and put his irises in. That's not what I wanted. Let's see. That's not what I wanted. This is what I wanted. All right. So he's looking at us. There we go. Now we got some irises in. Starting to make a little bit more sense. Let me get his center tooth line there. Okay. And then I'll probably just blend that out a little. All right. There we go. Now... Again, I'm going to go back and use my signature under highlight, which for me is my light aqua, if you're using Prismacolor. 
All right. And it'll just kind of give a little bit of a little bit of a highlight underneath. All right. So I realize we're kind of running out of time here. Um, I'm going to make this part quick. So we've kind of got an idea how bugs works. I'll probably push and pull the color on him a little bit more to kind of make that pop. And then I'll get in with his fingers. Um, but what I did want to show you was um, kind of getting into how bright colors pop. So let me put all of these color pencils back in their slots and I will have to reorganize them later because I am a little OCD and which might surprise my parents slightly, uh, but I need to have them in order. And if they're not in order, I freak out. Now, I didn't buy this $22 case, not that expensive, so that I could not have my colored pencils organized and a nice, neat 100 to 10%. I mean, look at this. This is a mess. Can you see that? I don't even know how you get along. I don't even know how I finished a class like this. It's ridiculous. All right. So I'm going to go with an orange. And in my uh, palette, I've got a pale vermilion. <laughs> Fancy. Pale vermilion. We're going to sharpen this little bad boy up here. And all I'm going to do is show kind of a, so I've got his fingers. I can see where his fingers are. Again, I'm going to outline this a little bit just so I can see where I'm going. And then after that, that's it. So his thumb kind of comes up here. There's the carrot. There's his finger. Right, 1930s. 1930s there we go and i'm gonna have to watch the film maybe it's on netflix i doubt it but i'm gonna try um okay so again we're pushing and pulling now when i'm when i'm using um especially when i'm doing like highlights and lowlights on colors like this i mean look at that that just jumps right off the page and i, I love that about these so as I'm doing this, and we'll end on the carrot, um, but as I'm doing this, all right, I've got, I've got that main part in, I might come back and, and just push this pale vermilion up a little bit more, right? And now that I have that, I kind of have my baseline, I can now push a highlight and push a low light. And on my, on my shadows, I love doing contrasting colors. So I use purple when I'm using yellows and oranges. I usually use a form of purple when I'm doing um, like deeper shadows. And for this, we're going to pull in a, a sand. And I'm going to just start to, there we go. So you can kind of see how that highlight jumps out a little bit and because ooh, where's my teal where's my teal all right so this would be a great example of where like when i'm bringing in the color underneath and i've you know i'm gonna do a little bit by his hand here but that that marker that like that little mark there and how much of a difference that makes then i'm gonna bust out my black cherry which are delicious and a fantastic color to work with. And for this, so I've got, I got two different kinds of shadows coming, right? Cause I have a light source from here, which means I'm going to have a shadow underneath his fingers and like these little crevices, you know, for the carrot. And so that's going to kind of come down there and then I can blend that a little. And all I do is press lighter as I move down. There we go. And then I've got kind of a shadow underneath here. And I'm going to start from where my highlight is. One, two, three. Uh, uh, uh. I could not help myself. All right, there we go. So you can kind of see already just getting the shadows down, right? Oh, that's, it feels so good. There's something satisfying about a well done shadow. It, and what I love about using contrasting colors is it, it's a richer look. So if I just use a dark orange, it, it's kind of flat. 
but this brings a little bit more dimension to it. So that's my black cherry and the carrot. Now look at all these carrots down here. Holy crap, is that going to be a pain in the butt? We'll have to figure that out when I get to that point, which won't be now because we're coming to a close. So here is where I want to go with this. Um, colored pencils are great. There's so much to the medium. It's not just like, a, oh, it's a little thing you do in a coloring book. Whatever. Sure, you could do that. But you can create really wicked pieces of art with that and kind of apply those same principles that you use in painting, right? Tones, lights, darks, blah, blah, blah. Contrasting colors, complementary colors, all that kind of stuff to create a really cool piece. And just like last week when I finished Pepe Le Pew and Penelope, I'm going to finish this one and I'll show it to you next week for my last class. Can you believe that? I think it's number 300. What? That's a lot. So uh, for the Chuck Jones Center for Creativity. So anyway, I uh, hope you learned a little something. Hope you had some fun with it. And uh, definitely watch Super Rabbit because it's a fantastic film. And I will see you guys next time.